The Arlington National Cemetery stands as one of, if not the most important cemeteries in all of America. In 1802, it was inherited by George Washington Park Curtis, the adopted son of George Washington, and he began construction on the Arlington House. Curtis's daughter, Marianna, who married Robert E. Lee, was then given inheritance of the property, and following her death, it was passed on to her oldest son, George Washington Curtis Lee. In 1861, Robert E. Lee resigned his commission when Virginia seceded from the Union at the start of the American Civil War. He took command of an armed force in Virginia, which later became the Army of Northern Virginia, and on May 7th, his troops controlled and occupied Arlington and the Arlington House. On May 3rd of that year, the Union set out to clear and occupy Arlington in the city of Arlington, Virginia, and the Arlington House quickly surrendered without opposition on May 24th. As the war raged on, the United States needed to find more places to bury the dead as cemeteries began to fill up. Seeing as the land of Arlington was had a high elevation and very flat, it seemed like the perfect place to bury the dead and a site for an honorary cemetery. And on May 13th, 1864, Arlington had its first military burial for William Henry Christman. At a tax sale in 1864, the United States acquired Arlington for only $26,000, the equivalent to under half a million today. Miss Aaliyah not appeared in person, but had sent an agent to pay prior property taxes, and the government turned her agent away. In 1874, Curtis Lee, her son, sued the United States government for claiming ownership of Arlington, and in December 1882, the United States court ruled 5-4 to four in Lee's favor and decided that Arlington had been confiscated without due process. After the decision, Congress returned the estate to him, and Curtis Lee sold it back for $150,000, the equivalent to $3.5 million, and the land officially became a military reservation. Throughout the monument, there are different visual elements besides the bland white tombstones. Some tombstones are more elaborate and have different designs than others. The monument is more representational. Some tombstones have big designs and take up more space, like the John F. Kennedy Memorial, which has its own exhibit and internal flame. The uniform headstones present the cemetery as very orderly, with no one standing out above the rest. There is some variation as the year moves towards the back of the cemetery, with more elaborate headstones standing out from the usual plain white. The uniformity of the headstones gives the impression that all those below these stones were not meant to stand out from each other, but the text on the stones distinguishes each stone from the others. The different fonts and text sizes are also different across different gravestones. There are different written texts throughout the monument on tombstones and inscriptions talking about the person or on different monuments throughout the cemetery, like the USS Main Memorial. The texts evoke an emotional response through repetition in order to convey their message. The different fonts and sizes are different for different stones to difference them from all the other gravestones. The USS Maine was a United States Navy ship that sank in Havana Harbor in 1898. 266 people died when it sank. Alright, we're good. How does, Memorial... How does Memorial make you feel? Extremely tearful and very, very sad. Because of all the people that are dead. Yes, and God bless them for what they were doing. They were just doing it to make us feel safe here at home. The monument appeals to pathos because standing in the middle of a cemetery of soldiers evokes strong emotions, especially for family members or friends of the people buried. The viewer must walk along seemingly endless paths that cross and weave throughout the cemetery to understand the size of the place. A visitor to the cemetery can find a particular grave if they are looking for family members or friends who were buried at Arlington. The monument can be a metaphor for the uniformity of the military. They were in uniform for much of their life and that continues with the uniform white headstones. Also, members of the military were honored during their life as well as after they became dead. The ceremony of the changing of the guard in front of the tomb of the unknown soldier shows the level of respect that is given to the World War I soldier.
the monument is just as effective today as it was when it was originally created. The cemetery still serves as a burial ground for honorably discharged soldiers, but because of decreasing space, the remaining spots in the already existing spots have an even greater value. The cemetery is expected to be completely full within 25 years from now.